This is a new component you're learning about called a capacitor and its function is to store charge which is why it's called a capacitor because it has a capacity to hold charge. Obviously this capacitor here can hold a lot more charge than this capacitor here because it's got a lot more area to store the charge on which is why the number there and the number there you can see it's got a bigger capacitance. The symbol for a capacitor is this um, it's basically a parallel plate uh, connected by some wires. You can think of a capacitor as two conducting plates separated by a dielectric. The conducting plates, when they're not charged, are neutral. They have equal amount of positive and negative charge. When uh, the dielectric is an insulator, it prevents any current flowing between the parallel plates. If, if it breaks, however, it can kind of start conducting, in which case the capacitor won't work. Now you can see the voltage up in the circuit. Now the, the whole voltage is across the switch because the switch has got a gap. So it, you can think of it as R equals infinity. The resistance is really large. Um, and then what, when, we, when I close the switch, now the voltage is across the resistor because that has the highest resistance. You can think of it as a capacitor as having no resistance at the beginning because it's not charged and it's easy to add and remove charge from an, a neutral plate so we can calculate using v equals ir the current that's flowing um, that's six volts i times 12 that gives me i equals 0 0.5 amps now, this is a large current flowing in the circuit so negative electrons are being pulled off this plate by the positive terminal and is being added onto this plate Okay, so now at the beginning, obviously it's very fast because it's easy to remove and add charge from a neutral plate. As time goes on, you can see the potential difference across the, the resistor is decreasing and the potential difference across the capacitor is increasing. That's because it's becoming more and more difficult to add charge onto this plate because it's already, you can see there's already more electrons on it than there should be. And it's becoming more difficult to remove electrons from this plate because there's already uh, electrons missing from it. So we can calculate again V equals IR. Now the current is 0 0.25 amps. So the current actually decreases exponentially. If you leave the capacitor on for long enough, it becomes completely charged uh, and you can't add any more charge onto the, onto the plate. So you can see now the potential different difference across the cell and the capacitor is the same and the potential difference across the resistor is zero. That's because you can think of the fully charged capacitor as having infinite resistance because it won't add any more, it won't let any more current flow because you can't add any more electrons to it. Now once the capacitor is fully charged, what I've done is I've removed the, uh, the, uh, the source of EMF, which was the cell. And nothing, uh, so because there's a break in the circuit, there's no electrical contact, so nothing can flow in the circuit, no current can flow, and the charge on the plates is fixed, it's constant right now because they have nowhere to go. As soon as I connect the contact point between them, current can flow in the circuit, and the charge rush off this plate here and get added onto the positive plate. You can see that now the capacitor is acting as a source of energy. The vo uh, you can use V equals IR to calculate the current and it's going to be large uh, using, it's going to actually uh, be equal to I equals 0 0.5 amps. Uh, and as more and more charge leave the plate, it becomes, the current decreases. Now the current becomes 0 0.25 amps and it's going to decrease exponentially until the, all, both the plates are completely neutral and there's no reason for any current to flow.